Welcome to NTV Exclusive. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It's a Saturday night. I'm your host, Abul Hasnat, and I've got another exclusive um, topic to discuss with you today. What are we talking about? I am going to lift it up and see how many of you have seen this. How many of you have heard about this? Is it on social media? Is it, is it somewhere on the internet? Is it being talked in the community? Whichever it is, today, I'm going to bring you the, the, the brains behind this, the masterpiece behind this, the person behind this. Salam bhai, welcome. It's As great to have you. Salam alaikum wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Um, Bangladesh Diaries, you know, um, I mean, I can introduce you as a writer, I can introduce you as a poet, but um, I, for today, I want to stick to introducing you as the man behind Bangladesh Diaries, and hopefully, I'm going to be cheeky and probably delve into a bit more with you later on to give us a little teaser for future, future times, inshallah. Um, but Bangladesh Diaries, um, I mean, before we talk about itself, mm -hmm. I just want to talk about the rumour mill. Uh, I don't know, let's not call it the rumour mill. The people out there that are talking, because everybody's like, oh, there's this Bangladesh Diaries. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's, and, good, and that's a good thing, right? Yeah, it's, it is a good thing, because what it is, is it's very inquisitive. They're very, very, everyone's minds are like, what could this be about? And for you to actually sit back and think, well, well um, you know, these people are questioning, Sh shall I give it away? I mean, wh what's running through your head when people are talking about this? Um, God, I, uh, I'm, I'm, gla I'm glad, I'm grateful, yeah. I'm appreciative that people are talking about it. Um, if they weren't talking about it, it means that we've done a very j bad job of, <laughs> of, of, of not only d delivering a good product, but also the promotion side of it as mm. well. So I think, you know, Alhamdulillah, we've, we've done well with the promotion and people throughout the UK are slowly buying the book. They're aware of the book. Um, they're aware of the, the intent intention with the book, mm. um, the charity side of it. You know, they're also, oh, I'm, I'm sure most people are aware that there's only a, a thousand copies available in the entire country. Um, mm. I have no aims to print any more once they sell out. Um, the part of being part of that pledge, you know, for the one thousand copies, is that when you buy the co uh, a copy of the book, you've got something solely exclusive. Mm. You know, it's a piece of history almost in a, in a, in a very uh, as as a humble way as possible. You know, um, well, of course it's humble because let's you you brushed over it quickly, but I I, I want to make sure everyone's aware the charity. You said the charity side of it. To me, this is a hundred percent charity. Yes, it is. Yes, please is. tell us more. Okay. Um, I came to the UK at the age of five and I had absolutely no desire or knowledge or any concern about Bangladesh whatsoever. Um, I lived in Europe for four, uh, 37 years before I decided, you know what, I'm a desh tami, I'm a nizor desh ki tami, yeh dekhi aikya. Of course. There's many things I wanted to do in my, t in my, li in my life that, you know, uh, before I go. Uh, and one of them was to see my own country. I had a lot of questions that needed answers and I couldn't find them here. So after 37 years, I went back to the country. I, I wasn't expecting to see much. I just thought, you know, let me go there with a the camera and whatnot. And I backpacked my way around for three months around the entire country. I didn't want to just see Silet. I wanted to see Bangladesh as a whole entity because there are so many types of people from Bangladesh, not just Siletis, you know. Hmm. Um, anyway, on my journeys, I encountered um, a lot of street children. A lot of street children. I didn't go there with the intention of making a book, so um, that's the first point. On my and, and, and I encountered a lot of um, orphans. Rastafurutain. Mm. You know, they're literally they're, 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 the daily life, the survival, just to eat, just to find somewhere to sleep, is 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 is, is, is almost, it's a struggle for mm. them. And whereas we take so much for granted in this country. Absolutely. So day, I think it was day seven or day eight into the journey, I thought, you know what? Um, there was two things. One, I noticed that. The pictures that I was taking, the snaps, I'm not a professional photographer, but I've got an eye for what looks good, you know, what I find looks good. And um, I, I noticed that the pictures that I was posting online, they were proving to be really popular amongst the British population, first of all. Secondly, um, I met a lot of children on my journey. I thought, you know what, I, I having seen all of this, the extreme poverty, you know, it's, it's raining in the middle of Dhaka. Um, uh, I mean, I'll get a, a very, very simple fact uh, about Dhaka is there are fi uh, uh, 500,000 children sleeping rough on the streets every night. So that kind of puts it into perspective. So like half a million kids. Half a million. I mean, half this, a million this is when kids, it really kicks in. Half a million kids. Half a million children wow. sleep rough and in one city <coughs> alone. That's just in Dhaka. Wow. So um, I thought, you know what, having witnessed all this stuff with my own eyes, if I go back to the UK now, my, my wonderful safe home, and my, my existence back here, and my business, and my friends and family here, and I don't do anything about this, it kind of makes me a little bit of a hypocrite, really. 
And I can't accept that about myself. So I thought, you know what, I, I'm a kitchen horalang. Well, I have to do something. Even if I take the pictures that I've taken, use them somehow to generate some kind of money and give that back to the children, Marvelous. That's, that's for me, that's a bonus. Marvelous. Um, so I came up with this concept of this book. Um, I took, I mean, we took, I took 6,000 pictures on my journeys, man. A lot of them wow. were rubbish. I'll be honest with you, any photographer will tell you that 90% of what you take is just generally ends up on the floor. Um, but from these 6,000, we narrowed it down to about 350 of the finest pictures that we could find. And there were pictures that resembled all, all backgrounds, all walks of life, all cities, uh, the rich, the poor, uh, all different situ you know, circumstances, not just one type of, you know, not just fruit and vegetables or, you know, or, or flowers and birds, nothing, no, just so it, it kind of, you've got some very dark pictures in there as well, like as in stark images, mm. you know, you've got people, you know, begging on the streets, you've got kids that are just begging, to, begging for food, mm. um, you know, and <coughs> so yeah, it, it reflects Bangladesh as a whole and I think, you know, uh, with my friends and, my, and the, the team behind it as well, I think we did, you know, we've done a, a, a wonderful job of offering a, 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 a high quality product, yeah, for, I mean, we're, we're t I've got a thousand copies, we've sold about 400 already now, 401, mm. including your copy, but, yeah, <laughs> um, but the, they are going, they'll go eventually. I mean, I, I estimate another three to six months, they'll all be gone. Well, um, you know, that's, that's probably what I really want to emphasize here as well. So everyone, for those of you that were trying to catch on what's Bangladesh Diaries intentions, you've just hit, hit, heard it here. I uh, hope you don't mind me saying from the horse's mouth <laughs> as the analogy goes, but it's literally that. It, all of this, the, this is a, this is Salambay's journey and we're going to talk through his journey shortly um, of, of Bangladesh after 37 years. And every penny that's coming from this, um, well, the, 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 I, I shouldn't use the word every penny because there, there's always a different analogy. But the, this is generated for the poor that he, um, the poor that he saw back in Bangladesh, and this is what it's going towards. Hence. I'm now going to cover a disclaimer of everyone. I'm not going to show you the pictures. I've got it in front of you. I'm going to go over them and we're only going to explain them because I want everyone out there to actually know what good cause this is going to. And from our hopeful, hopefully our verbal explanation of this, this makes you understand a bit more and want to go and get this book. Because I'll tell you what, I've seen a bit of it. I'm convinced already, but I hope, hoping over the next, um, well, we're an hour that we've got this show running for, you are too. So um, just, to, just to clarify, yes. um, I know that the, we, a, lot of the, a lot of the people here in, in, in the UK are from Sileti origin. So we thought, we considered this, we thought it was only fair so, uh, to give half of that money to Silet. So half the money goes, actually goes to an orphanage in the Silet district, Brilliant. Uh, which houses 250 girls. And the other half of that money goes to an, 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 a great organisation in Dhaka, uh, which rescues street children from places like Kamlapur Station, uh, takes them off drugs, takes them out of the prostitution, uh, takes, tries to get them away from the pimps, and, and re reunites them with their families. So, so it's sort of a, a very proactive yeah, 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 these NSPCC, let's call it. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, wow. these are these are um, the two main the two the two main um, causes that the book is funding. So hopefully, Brilliant. you know, uh, once we sell all one thousand, we'll have raised we'll raise approximately twenty grand. For the, diff to for the diff different charities. So. Brilliant. Um, so going on to Bangladesh charities now, Salambay, I mean, um, the first thing I'm looking at here, and I, um, it's almost like I'm looking at a different man, because this is a, um, I mean, the first image that we've got of you there is typical of a British Bangladeshi tourist in Bangladesh. I, I was very much. I think that's day four of my <laughs> journey. Yeah, I was, I was busy writing up my blog and, and somebody just snapped it. I, 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 I have to ask, because you've got, um, you've got the earphones in, and obviously I'm thinking there must be a melody or a tune that was probably motivating you in whatever you were writing there. Oh God, you uh, share that it's, with us? it's really, f I, I tend to li listen to a lot of Nithin Sawney. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if you know his music, but um, it's, it's... Anything prior 90s is very difficult for me. But okay, uh, Nithin Sawney is very, very, is, uh, is very, very kind of uh, ambient house stroke uh, ethnic Indian Okay. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's mostly done in the studio. Um, a lot of times he samples stuff like tabla, mm. uh, uh, the, 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 you know, the uh, sitar. Sitar, right. So, yeah, um, some beautiful music. Oh, so it's, it's, this is more of sort of a, um, a relaxation. Mm. Oh. I, I, I find that when I'm writing, um, especially when you're having to write like you know, six, seven thousand words, I find that with music in, the, in my ears, I, I, I tend to write a lot faster. Mm. So I just literally, I know what I want to write. I have it. I'm just whizzing away. Nothing to do with clearing your conscious. It's more like motivating. It's just it's just going. background. It's just literally wow. background noise. Otherwise, you you hear your own fingers typing, and that's not what you want. So, 
I'm, I'm looking at the first sort of few pages here then. Um, I mean, I mean you, you've called it the, uh, the AU Foundation. That's the one of the charities that are benefiting. Uh, that's the one in uh, Shunam Gonj, the AU Foundation. If you guys are watching, uh, they're British based. Right. Uh, they're a, I think they're a 30, 30 strong team of young educated professionals, Bangladeshi, Br British Bengali professionals mm. um, that try, that are doing a lot for Bangladesh and the country and especially the children there. Um, the second charity is, uh, can I say, is, is Muslim charity, yep. which is taking care of the Dhaka side of the thing. So mm. um, the Dhaka side of the of the whole, you know, the fundraising. So yeah, I mean, mm. those two great organisations. It's, um, I mean, the choice of pictures that you've had for two, um, for those two uh, charities. I mean, the, the AU Foundation. Um, it, you, you, I mean, you've done a really nice sort of image of um, what I would probably. Is that irrigation really taking place? There, that's actually it? that's actually a fishery. Wow. In in, uh, in a place called Shatkira, right, which is in well Shatkira Bangshipur, which is very very near Sh uh, Shundarbon. Oh, okay. So it's it's beautiful place, beautiful part of the world. And um, then and then the, and the help the needy Muslim charity. I mean that's that's got a very very um, a very stark picture of an individual on yeah, on, on a yeah, cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Managed to get his wheels to, uh, so easily round whilst uh -huh. wearing a longi. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's brilliant. Yeah. Bangladeshi life for you. And 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 then so I mean, you. Um, I should. I, I'm. <laughs> why am I taking this over? Why did you do continue. So, so your journey begins. So three and a half months. Go, talk us through sort of your first week and and you know, you took us through and hopefully the images will help my me out. My first well. week was absolutely chaotic. I mean, that is pretty much my first week. You can see there. Uh, the first week I was there, I spent in Dhaka. And it was, for me, it was the biggest eye-opener. I mean, it was a culture shock. It was, I, I, Dhaka does not shut down. Mm. Uh, two, three in the morning, people are still drilling. Brrr, you know, there's, there's construction going on. There's beeping going on. There's, there's, Dhaka does not shut down. And it, about three in the morning, it dies down, only for it to start up again about six in the morning. So you've got three hours of period where it's just quiet. But it's a continuous, it's continuous hustle. So a big culture shock for you then? It was a mega city. And, and well, I, didn't, I, I didn't really think I was in Bangladesh until I got out of Dhaka. Mm. Yeah, it was just a huge, really congested version of Whitechapel. <laughs> Only everything was in Bangla, all the signs were in Bangla, which is actually very reminiscent of Whitechapel anyway. So mm, yeah. yeah, it slowly is. Yes, <laughs> it's a very, um, but no, it's, it's, it, it, to be honest with you, Dhaka could be any city anywhere in the world. I've been to a few other places that resemble Dhaka on a, on a, on a, on a visual level. Mm. Um, it's messy, it's dirty, it's congested, it's lots of people. The only difference about, between Dhaka and, say, Istanbul, for example, or um, Cairo, I mm. Cairo is just, or, or Rio. Rio is just as messed up. The only biggest difference is the fact that everybody around you is speaking Bangla. Mm. And, and so you felt a bit more comfortable. Yeah, you know you're in Bangladesh, but yeah. really, if you if you close your ears and just watch your with you use your eyes, visually you could be in any any, any one of those other cities. Does I should have asked you this question before, actually. Going after 37 years, before uh -huh. you experienced what you experienced in Dhaka, uh -huh. what was your expectation? Oh God, I, I I'll be honest with you, I had um I had, I, I initially when I got there, I surrounded myself with a huge bubble. Um, I think it was a few days in, about I'd say five, day five or six, where I kind of learned, where I kind of learned to relax. And that once the bubble had dropped, I could absorb more, much more of the culture. Mm. But initially, I went there because I was the people over here. You know, the, the, we, I say that people over here. Some people over here have, have a very negative impression of Bangladesh. Oh, you'll get robbed, you'll get mugged, you'll get sold, you'll get chopped to bits, you'll get married off to, you'll get voodoo down on you, you know, don't eat anything when you go to a stranger's house, don't trust anyone, yeah, don't give, ask anybody for directions because they'll try to uh, kidnap you. Uh, yeah, so you initially you go there and you're a little bit careful about everything, but I, after I'd got there and I'd learned to relax, I, I, I opened up a lot more and it's nothing like they describe. Amazing, isn't you know, it? You know, Bangladesh is a very, very warm, even the ones that have absolutely nothing to give. The extreme poor. I noticed one thing, the poorer they were, the less they had in wealth, financial wealth, the more open they seemed to be. Mm. The more open, welcoming they were, the more they wanted, to you, they wanted you to see their lives and see how they were living. Not because they wanted some, you to give them anything, but just to be able to say to you, look, I'm, 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 I have nothing, but I, I have still have 
This is yeah. what I have. Still you trying know? to prove. Well, yeah, no, I am someone. You know? Yeah, yeah. And that that is 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 amazing to to experience firsthand. You know. Um, mm. I tell you what, we need to go for a quick break, Sanabe. Sure, sure. Um, sure. Please don't go away. We've only just dealt with week one and he was out there for three and a half months. I'm sure you've still got plenty that need to be answered and um, I certainly have. So we'll go for a quick break. We'll be back. Don't go away. <laughs>